Good morning, friends. In full disclosure, today's devotion is going to be about a quarter of a devotion and really like three quarters of a teaser for the upcoming message of the Sunday. And I don't really usually do this very often because each day that we have a devotion, I want to leave something, you know, immediately good uh, for you and something to encourage you and help you throughout the day. And I hope I can do that in part today. But but a part of that is even going to be encouraging you to attend Sunday's service or listen to the the sermon that I love I upload uh, to this channel on the following Monday uh, because we have a pretty big topic coming up because a- as we continue in Matthew's account of all that happens in the run up to our Lord's death and resurrection we see and have seen a significant emphasis on the sovereignty of God in all of it. Uh, We, of course, took note of this this past week, demonstrating how our Lord's enemies were plotting against Jesus. And yet, according to God's eternal decree, all those things were going to end up accomplishing God's own will rather than the will of his enemies. In other words, no matter how much the enemies of Christ wanted to put a stop to him, no matter how much Satan himself wanted to to kill Jesus and to usurp his place or whatever it is that Satan was hoping to do, in truth, everything that the enemies of Christ did actually ended up furthering Christ's goals rather than stopping them. And, you know, that raises a lot of questions. Questions like, how does God's sovereignty and man's free will interact? Because at this moment, um, I actually forget which devotion it was, but it was one of the recent ones in the last couple of days, I, I think. <laughs> we, but we could, because we talked about how we need and should actually want God to be sovereign and to be absolute in his sovereignty, because if he isn't sovereign, uh, if, if, if he does not control all things, then we can't actually trust any of his promises. Because if he's not actually in charge, if he can't orchestrate all things to accomplish his purposes and his end goals, then he may not actually be able to keep any of his promises. And so if we're not sure if God can keep any promises, then why should we be excited to stand on those promises? And so that's something that I do want to encourage you today. Maybe that's the the quarter part of the devotion for this morning, just to remind you of that fact that we're going to be talking about that that God is sovereign. And we're going to be talking about God's sovereignty in some pretty, uh, maybe I'll even use the word extreme, or what might, might appear to our sensibilities to be talking about the sovereignty of God in some pretty extreme ways. But even so, um, we need that. Uh, if, if God is not absolutely sovereign, then all of our comfort, all of our peace, all of our confidence really goes out the window. And uh, that was, of course, the, the main point of that previous devotion. And I, I just repeat that for you today, that we would hold on to that. Um, but in that previous devotion, as we were kind of emphasizing that one point, I also mentioned that that leads to questions about how God's sovereignty and, and mankind's free will can coexist. But at the time I said, well, don't worry about that right now. We're just going to focus on the main thing that God's sovereignty is a necessary and good thing. Well, that's true. But in our upcoming sermon, we're going to dive into that that very topic about God's sovereignty and man's own free will coexisting. Because uh, as we as we keep reading there in Matthew 26, we're going to see that Jesus reaffirms that everything is happening exactly as it's been ordained by God. Uh, that the Son of Man uh, goes as it was written, meaning that he will be betrayed as it was written. He will be turned over to the authorities as it was written, that he will suffer as it is written, uh, and also that he will not remain in the grave, that, that death will not be able to keep him uh, just as it is written. And so all that is going to happen to Jesus is going to happen as it has been written, as it has been plotted out and planned according to God's eternal decree from before the foundation of the earth. But part of that that we, you know, don't want to gloss over is that Jesus's betrayal would be is part of that that was decreed, part of that that was written about beforehand. And yet Jesus himself says here in Matthew 26, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And at that point, a massive question comes to us, namely, wait a minute, if Judas's betrayal has been 
ordained by God, if God has in some way dictated that Judas was going to betray Jesus, then how can Judas still be held accountable for the betrayal? Because at that point, at least to our perception, uh, it would seem like Judas doesn't have a choice, right? It's like he's been locked into this this betrayal since eternity past, uh, you know, and, and now he's 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 being acted upon by forces outside his control. So if that's true, and we'll talk about whether or not that is true, but if that's true, how is it right or fair or just for Jesus to pronounce such a grievous curse on him? Because, of course, he does. He says, Jesus says that it would be better for for Judas, the one who's going to betray him, for him to never have been born, which would seem to indicate that his punishment will be especially severe because he's the one who actually does the betraying. And, and so, again, we have that question. If God decrees all that comes to pass, then on the one hand, how can mankind exercise a genuinely free will? That's kind of the more general question. Again, the sovereignty of God, God's decree, how can mankind still have a genuinely free will? How can those two things coexist? But to be even more specific, which applies to Judas, obviously, but we can ask it regarding ourselves and our own sin. If God decrees all that comes to pass, including that Judas would betray the Christ, then how can God still hold Judas accountable for doing the very thing he was destined by God to do? Because, of course, the scriptures make it very clear that God does ordain all things that comes to pass. As just one example, Ephesians 1.11 says, In him we have been obtained, uh, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. So why does God work all things out in a specific way? Because of the counsel of his will that he's already established because he has predestined all things according to his own purposes. So the eternal sovereign decree of God is clearly taught in the scriptures. And Jesus clearly says that Judas will be held accountable for the betrayal that he commits. And so again, one last time, the question we're going to ask, and I hope provide significant answers for on Sunday is how can both these things be true at the same time? How is it right and just that God ordain and decree whatever comes to pass, and yet people are still individually responsible for doing the things that God so ordained to happen? So, stay tuned. I hope to see you in person on Sunday to... Uh, uh, give the message and we can talk about it after the service. Um, But if you can't attend the service for whatever reason, I'll of course be posting the sermon to this channel and the follow-up devotions uh, in the coming week. And I'll see you then. With that, have a good and godly day and Lord willing, according to a sovereign purpose, I hope to see you on Sunday.